Okay, let's get started. So I got the or we got a question related to the um the difference between Data Word 2.0 and Data Word 2.1. So the, the the basically the question from the person was so what's the difference between Data Word 2.0 and 2.1 in terms of design principles, ETL patterns, modeling best practices. So I'm currently in the in the phase of getting um um as you know, maybe I, I do the, the trainings for the data with 2.0 training at the moment. And I'm in the certification process at the moment for getting data with 2.1 certified as well. So um, so I'm in touch at the moment with the data with Alliance a lot at the moment. And uh, yeah, know all the content. So I finished, let's see, uh, at least I, I ran through all the content last week. And so, yeah, I, I think I can... Uh, tell you some some uh, maybe not insights but i can tell you from 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 a high level perspective so what changed what's new etc so maybe first of all there's no let's say really breaking change so um then didn't reinvent the wheel here right so the the, the core principles of data world is still the same also from modeling perspective because that, that's what's um also here one part of the question modeling best practices yes there are some additional best practices but the core model modeling principle like with the hubs the links and satellites completely the same right so otherwise i think it would be data word three point something but that's i also asked them for that but no that's definitely not on the plan um so that's why we stick to data word 2.1 now but let's have a deeper look into maybe or what what is new in the data world 2.1 um, so one one definitely is uh, because the yeah the 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 world changes the world um, um, evolves, and we're facing in the last years new terminologies like data lakehouse, data mesh, data fabric, etc. So they are also now addressed in the data what 2.1 methodology to um, yeah to just address them to uh, how to deal with that, how to face it. So where does it fit? To the current architecture, etc. So this is one thing. So the, the the current state of the art with all the technologies also coming with Databricks, for example, right? So this is addressed much more than before. Um, then the differentiation between logical and physical modeling. So this is, uh, I think, that was a nice move um, because we we receive very often the question. So or let's say modeling is a really sensible topic in data world for the most persons because that's what you're doing right so the implementers the data world or the data engineers basically deal with the implementation right and they want to know so what's the best model uh, how to, to to model it the best and we diff or then or the dva differentiates here now with um uh, between the logical and the physical modeling the thing is that the number of database and database technologies gets more and more and they they are different right so you you can be on the relational database you can be on the graph database you can be on the document store database and on all of them you can create the data world as data world is a logical concept right or a methodology but the, the modeling is just uh, from from uh, it's just logical basically so why you maybe have modeled a hub and a satellite in um or from implementation perspective, you would uh, implement a hub table and a satellite table on SQL Server, for example. You can, or you maybe you will not do that on a document store, maybe. So that, there you maybe want to denormalize more the data to leverage the power of those databases and keep hub and satellite information or the data into one document, right? So there are different between the the um, the data um, the database or the technology platform platforms out there and therefore it's more we are more talking about the logical modeling right so there are still we have our hub strings and satellites but how the data engineers at the end implement that technically in the database this is a different topic right so and this is where we um, don't talk especially if we really just talk about the modeling part not the implementation part but in the modeling part we don't talk too much for um, um, uh, in the, in the physical modeling perspective. So more from the logical modeling perspective and uh, discuss this, right? So, all right. Um, yeah, otherwise uh, the focus is also more managed service BI as um, yeah, for ever growing projects. Um, also relates a little bit to the data mesh principle, right? So where you outsource your teams so that you don't have this bottleneck with the one central IT anymore. So, but you have 
you still have this enterprise vision. You still have your enterprise data warehouse still out there. But um, more and more people will come and, and need more data coming with new requirements, right? And you need to enable them to do their own stuff, right? And not being IT as a, as a bottleneck there. But this also requires more um, uh, security um, uh, rules. So you have to implement it. So who can see what and where to give them access already on the raw world or on the business world, information mode, et cetera. And we're talking about role-based access control, role level security, et cetera. And um, if the database allows also something like column level security or um, how to mask data, et cetera. Right? So this is definitely a bit more in focus in the current uh, uh, training. In general, there are much more details. I will open um, our website in a few minutes and there you can see a little bit more details and also how much time you need to spend now to get certified. So far it was a one day video training up front. So that, that was a video recording. So you have to watch them. I think it was around about six hours and now it's much more videos, but the, the time, the on-site training time is the same. So you have to spend right now around about five days for the uh, for the whole training and to get certified right um yeah json handling that's quite new so then spend um, a whole section for how to deal with json data the best right so because the data from source systems maybe doesn't arrive or more and more often doesn't arrive just in the tabular format and uh, and, and columns and descriptions and data types, etc. Sometimes we just get a JSON file with nested structures, with arrays and objects within objects, etc. And there is a whole section on JSON, how to do with that the best. Um, some organizational changes also. Um, it's more uh, mandatory video materials. So you have you spend much more time with them at that point, right? Not live, but uh, you will uh, hear his thoughts uh, and his uh, um, um instructions much more because he moved um, a lot of parts which we taught in data 2.0 uh, where, where the trainer took part of it this is moved into the videos so that the trainers have more time to talk about the more technical part right so the best practices what we know from the projects um, that we don't spend too much time to the theoretical part right so this is more uh, sourced out to to dance part in the videos that we can spend in the training a bit more time um, for yeah, the implementation, the modeling, more interactions with the with the students, more questions, etc. Um, in general, there was a, also a rework of a lot of slides, um, as I mentioned, and then didn't reinvent the wheel. But um, so you will recognize, I don't know, a couple of slides are still the same as before, but not so many, right? So he also reworked um, the the whole slide deck for the three day training. And also for the videos, but um, if you visited already Data War 2.0 training and now come to Data War 2.1, you will see the one or the other slide where you remember I, I know this one from Data War 2.0 because yeah, some things are still the same, still good, right? Um, and that's what a lot of people asked for and now finally implemented is um, there are a lot of quizzes in between. So after each section and each section uh, depends uh, goes or takes roundabouts from. 20 minutes to one hour roundabout and eat after each section of videos and also in the on uh, on-site class you have quizzes right so you can you can do quizzes it's like five to five to ten questions where you can validate that you can you use the following right so you can uh, validate yourself so hey i'm i'm still on track i'm still um able to follow here right so or or if you have to revisit something or reread something and uh, so this helps you, first of all, to prepare a little bit more for the exam because the quizzes are also, the questions are also used for the exam. And it gives you, um, yeah, um, a status in between, right? So, and you can prove yourself that you understood what, what the trainer told you, right? All right. Um, yeah, let's have a look on uh, the, the trainings quickly. So here on our website, um, you can also just visit scavery.com, then trainings, then datawatt 2.1. And below here, you can find the next schedules. Um, this week was the first training done by Volker. And um, yeah, some are scheduled already for September to October, November, December. So once per month roundabout. 
uh, three in English, two in German. And uh, yeah, let's have a look maybe here to the details. As you can see also here, it's still a three day training. So from uh, usually from Monday to Wednesday, but you can see that you have to watch a little bit more. You have to spend a little bit more time in watching video content up front. Right. If you have any further questions, just reach out to me or to our sales team, sales at scarefree.com, and get in touch to get more information. Thank you for watching. If you want to build a scalable and resilient data platform, read the free Data World Handbook by scanning the QR code or accessing the link. Bye and see you soon.